Hey, this is Michael Emery. Thanks for tuning into the Slow Baja. This podcast is powered by Tequila Fortaleza, handmade in small batches, and hands down, my favorite tequila. Slow Baja is brought to you by the Nora Mexican 1000. Do you have a 4x4? Do you want to see off road racing up close and personal? Join Slow Baja on the Savvy Safari 4x4 class led by off road racing legend Kurt LaDuc. The Savvy Safari class is a great way to experience the happiest race on earth. For more information, check out www.nora.com. That's www.nora.com. Hey, it's Michael Emery, and I am delighted to be on a slow Baja Zoom call with the Desert Dutchman. We're talking about the Baja XL. These guys were a lot of fun on the 2019 Baja XL, and I'm sorry they're not going to be on the 2021 trip. And I was just trying to find folks out there in the world of the Baja XL family that could break it down and explain to folks um, what this event is all about. And since you guys flew out from Pennsylvania, rented a forerunner, covered it with fabulous graphics and looked like you were having a good time every time our paths crossed. I just wanted to have you introduce yourselves and, and tell, them, tell them the slow Baja world how how you guys in Pennsylvania decided you're just going to, you know, do this thing down in Baja and how it all came together. So take it away. Sure thing. Hey, uh, well, this is Marshall. Uh, this is Jamie Wagamuth and uh, also a member of the team. And we're all, we're all actually from the same town, Schaeferstown. We live within a half a mile of each other. So uh, it wasn't hard to get together. PA, right? Schaeferstown, PA, not next to Baja. Correct. Yeah. On the other side. Yeah. All right, so we've got Marshall Kramer, Jamie Wilmaguth, and Craig Diefenbach. Hey, welcome to Slow Baja, guys. So whose idea was this? I'm gonna Craig? say I'm gonna say it was mine. Yeah. Definitely was Craig's. Yeah. So I I don't know, I was sitting at work one day and it was I found Baja XL two days before the original one started. So that's 2017. Yeah, 2017, sitting at work one day, found it on the computer, and I was like, oh my gosh, can I make it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and obviously with two days until the start, I, I wasn't going to make it. But the next night, <clears throat> actually, yeah, that night I started formulating a plan to, to make it to the next one. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I grabbed three really good friends who live in town, Marshall, Jamie, and uh, our other friend, Tom, who unfortunately couldn't make it then. And uh, I was like, hey, I got a really fun idea. And uh, these suckers all said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me about your friendship a little bit. How far back does it go and what other sort of adventures, uh, briefly, uh, do you guys entertain? So... I don't know, briefly, and I don't, I know Craig and I are sitting side by side, so I know we're just taking off each other, so I don't want to take from Jamie, but uh, Jamie grew up across the street from me, and uh, we've had, uh, you know, our friendship for a long time, and and myself and Craig, we actually went to uh, spring break in Cancun together. Yeah. So that was like, you say spring our... break, I say senior week. Oh, that's right. <laughs> These guys are all older than me. I picked older, more uh, responsible people. <laughs> well, it sounds sounds fun either way. Yeah. So uh, that's that's probably where one of our our first adventures started. Uh, but we we all travel well, and we've all been doing a lot of things together in different capacities uh, for events and. Uh, get togethers and, and expeditions, stuff like that. Craig and Jamie uh, have been doing a lot of uh, motorcycle riding, you know, pre COVID. Yeah, I think that might be one of the reasons that, uh, that, that some of us came to mind to Craig. Um, Craig's been an enduro rider and which takes some organization and some, you know, keep your head on right to get through things. And uh, Marshall did a, um, uh when what year was that marshall that you did the uh that was uh 16 16 yeah, I did all... a road rally through uh northeastern united states and which one yeah. can i ask 
Yeah, for sure. That was, uh, it was called the Fireball Run. That was uh, an Amazon uh, syndicate uh, kind of thing. That was 10 days, 5,000 miles um, through New York, PA, Virginia, uh, and then, then uh, the New England states as well. In what sort of vehicle, Marshall? That one we had a, Jamie, what was it? That was a, you, uh, you were there when they- Yeah, it was like a Chevy crossover, some sort of- uh... Trail, like a trail, the trailblazer. Gotcha. All mm -hmm. right. Well, had anybody had any Baja experience? I, I did. Um, my wife and I actually have a timeshare down in Cabo. And uh, we, so we've been down there quite a few times. <clears throat> and the one time, uh, well, we did wide open Baja twice. Oh, we, there you go. All yeah, right. On the class 10 cars. It was amazing. It was awesome. Great experience. Uh, highly recommend it. <clears throat> so we did that twice and got to uh, like kind of be comfortable in the area. So then we started renting a Jeep and exploring more while we were down there. Um, so yeah, I was down, I don't know, five or six times ahead of this. I'd been to San Diego, but I've never seen a cactus. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I'm a California. I went to college in San Diego. So we just went to, to Baja because it was next door. And that's like, you know, where kids in the Northeast would have gone to Canada to go drinking. We, we went to Baja because that's where you could go drinking before you're 21. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, I just associate, well, you know, yeah. vacations in Florida for folks who live in, in, uh, or the Caribbean, depending on what your, your tax bracket is for folks who live uh, anywhere in the, you know, Midwest or the East or what have you. So to get to Baja isn't something that I would expect. So that's, that's why I was uh, heading down that path. So we've got a little bit of Baja experience. Somebody found this crazy event on the computer. Uh, sounds like some old friends said, yeah, why not? And then take me through um, which, which one of you is, is graphics? Is that uh, Marshall? Are you the graphics guy? Correct. All right. So for, for the folks, uh, listening, um, these guys showed up at the Baja XL at a beautifully decked out modern ish, maybe a 2010 or 2012, uh, forerunner, um, but fully done, thoughtfully done, spectacularly done in graphics. So let's get right on to, you know, um, the mindset. What, what got you down this path of like, you know what, let's fly out there and rent a truck and do it all up. Well, that was actually plan B. <laughs> all right. So who's, who's uh, vintage scout didn't make it. <laughs> Good thinking. It, it was, a, I guess, was a, a vintage uh, Jeep Cherokee, I guess we'd say, Craig, but it was... Uh, the 2000 uh, Cherokee. Yeah, we were talking about what vehicle we might want to use when this whole idea came up, and one of Craig's relatives had a tenant who had left him high and dry, but, uh, you know, blew out of this apartment but le and, and, and left a, a Cherokee behind. Sounds like so Craig part. said, hey, I think I can get one pretty cheap here, so... I think he, he dug up the title and we gave like 600 bucks for this thing and yeah. uh, started working on it. And that was the plan. And then how did that unravel? Like a ball of twine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we, as Craig mentioned before, he came upon this idea literally two years before the, the 2019 event and, and, only having that little bit of time, we ran out of time before when it came time to be at the 2019 event. We worked on that thing for know, how many nights, how many hours, and we're and cutting it up and you welding think, it up. You think for four guys that live within two miles of each other, we could have gotten together more often. <laughs> but, you know, like life, and I got three little kids, and every, you know everybody else has kids. It, it, the two years went quick. And then we had trucking planned to... Uh, Vegas. So the plan was we were going to fly into Vegas. Uh, the Jeep was going to be sitting in Vegas waiting for us. I had all the arrangements made. And when I called the trucking company back to confirm and get it all scheduled, they like totally backed out on their price. And it went from 800 bucks to like two grand. And it was like, okay, well, that's, that's not going to work. Um, so luckily Jamie thought far enough in advance and, and was planning plan B with you know, and that's 
that's where the forerunner came in. Yeah, there was a company that I think that Baja Excel was actually promoting that was the only rental company in California that would allow you to take one of their rental vehicles anywhere in Baja. So uh, I struck up a conversation with them, started pricing some things out. And, and one night we, we planned a meeting and I said, okay, here, here's an idea, you know, just kind of laid the whole thing out, compared it to our current budget versus what uh, this might cost. And it just made more sense. So I said, Hey, let's fly out and just get our vehicle. Yeah. I think uh, it definitely came down to the budget because we were all, you know, we all had our, our increments put in there, our, our portions. And then uh, once we figured out, Jamie found that we could get a, uh, I think it was a later model than that. I think it might have been like a 15, a 2015 Toyota 4Runner. And as soon as we knew we could confirm that and uh, rent that, uh, the other partner, Tom, Jamie and Tom, uh, you guys were going around uh, getting schematics of the forerunner uh, so we could do all the graphics. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Jamie, Jamie yeah. those pictures and text messages. Him and Tom were at the beach on vacation together and they were going on like night missions and, and measuring random forerunners. Yeah, we actually were, yeah, we would go and find one in a parking lot and measure it up because Tom was going to do the graphics, how to make sure everything fits. So, you know, we're taking dimensions off of other people's forerunners to make sure it's going to work. So yeah, Tom actually laid out the the initial graphics uh, uh, for for the forerunner, and then uh, I developed the logo and got all the the large like the like the Baja XL logo and everything, and just transformed all that into vector print files and turned everything into large format that Tom could print out at work. And uh, so we actually had that all. Sh packaged and shipped out to the rental company and that's i don't know how much time we have or what is 24 hours too long for a podcast to tell this story but uh, <laughs> but uh we started we well from the day we decided that we we're going with the forerunner we just started purchasing and shipping stuff directly to the the rental company which they weren't too happy with once we found out once we got there well we filled their we filled their business with Amazon boxes uh, and when we arrived. We arrived and, and uh, they weren't too happy, we found out. And, and one of the reasons was that they were seeing some of the stuff that was arriving at their shop and saying, why do you need traction mats for our rental car? <laughs> yeah. So they got a little suspicious that uh, this was more than just a drive through Baja. Uh, casual drive through Baja and we had to do a little bit of negotiating to um, convince them that we weren't going to bring their vehicle back like uh, like the rental car in Jackass. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it. The company that uh, you rented from? Uh, California Baja, I think it was. Yeah, yeah it was uh, right. ac an acronym like Cal Baja, yeah. Baja. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, I don't. I didn't see their name floating around this time. I think Andrew had promoted them last time, but uh, and they had rented to another participant. There was a European team that came over. <laughs> they got a, a raft. <laughs> they what's that? Another one got a, a forerunner too, but they showed up. They showed up in a uh, what's the rental car you can get like a you just pick up rent from anybody, and they. Would they show up in like an Austin Martin or something? Yeah, they rented some exotic vehicle right off the airplane and showed up at the rental agency. Yeah, right with like a yeah, yeah. yeah. Austin Martin Baja rent a car. But but you know they um, yeah they were nervous. Uh, they thought that we were racing their forerunner uh, from top to bottom as fast as we could go, and we tried to convince them that they were, we were in the adventure class, not the racing class. We spent a pretty sweaty hour, I think, talking to them because we were very concerned that we weren't going to get out of there with a vehicle. But uh, I gave up. I was already looking through Craigslist. <laughs> like, like Jamie's negotiating and seeing if his credit card's big enough to get us this vehicle. And I'm just in the back, guys. And I'm like, look, man, this for 500 bucks, we can go buy this right now and still go. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's where I was at that, at that point. I'm like, we can, we're still doing this, whether they give us a car or not. I love the spirit. Yes, exactly. 
Um, you know, I had some discussions with my, uh, my friend Jeff Hill at um, Baja Bound Insurance because uh, Andrew had contacted them way back when about um, being the official insurer of the event. And I think when you have Hungarians contacting an American insurance company that sells Mexico insurance and they're talking about rallies and people renting vehicles and this and that. And, you know, I think, I think my buddy Jeff just said, uh, I'm not sure if that's right for us. <laughs> yeah. let's, let's see how the first one works out. <laughs> so uh, I it's think it's understandable. I mean, they, you know, they've got a the big investment in their fleet of cars and um, they're going to hand you the keys and send you out in the desert and um, um, they don't know you. And um, yeah. <clears throat> they, they apparently weren't very familiar with, with the Baja. Um, well, nobody is. Familiar, yeah. With, with the Baja XL, they were familiar with Baja, but but not the XL because obviously there are different categories. Yeah, and it's new, and it was new, and it's Hungarian, and yeah, I mean a lot of people just don't didn't get it. Yeah. So uh, oh, I'd agree with that. The, I didn't get it until like day three or four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So and, let's let's get into that. How do you? How would you? How do you? How how have you described this event? to, you know, friends and family? Good question. Let me back up quick to Baja Bound Insurance. Yes. yes. Are they still doing chapstick? <laughs> oh my God. I found a Ziploc bag with about a dozen uh, chapsticks under the seat of my Land Cruiser. Nice. Uh, maybe right after Christmas. It was like the greatest gift ever. That stuff is the bomb. It's amazing. Oh it is in my pocket right now. You can scrape it off your lips two hours later and it's like a nice little dessert. Nope. <laughs> no, it yep. really sincerely, astonishingly is great lip balm and what a great marketing gimmick. Um, yes, yes I, I have about a dozen. If you need some, you can uh, text me your address and I'll be sending it out tomorrow. But yeah, I'm bringing more of that down. Um, Baja Bound is not the official sponsor of the Baja XL. I'd like to announce that, but Baja Bound is the best Mexico insurance and has the best lip balm. Here at Slow Baja, we can't wait to drive our old Land Cruiser south of the border. And when we go, we'll be going with Baja Bound Insurance. Their website's fast and easy to use. Check them out at BajaBound.com. That's BajaBound.com, serving Mexico travelers since 1994. <laughs> I'm glad we took care of that housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, how do you explain it? Um, yeah, I mean, I anybody? That, uh, like I mentioned, you know, doing the other, the other road rally, I kind of had an idea of, you know, how, how the days might go, but, um, you know, you know, listening to your other podcasts, you know, the Baja is, it's something different. It's, it's, it's its own little place in the world. And, uh, so trying to explain that and, uh, the landscape and that type of stuff and, and the stuff you traverse, that's probably the hardest thing to explain as far as the camaraderie and working together in the day to day. That's probably, that's probably easier than trying to explain, you know, the, the back roads of the Baja, if that makes sense. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I often tell people when they, you know, because a lot of people followed us on Facebook and, you know, Marshall did a great job keeping us up up on social media during and after and so on. And, and so you, you end up finding out a whole lot of people were actually watching. And when you, you know, when you go to describe it to them, um, it, it's hard to do because very few people have driven the length of the Baja Peninsula. Uh, it's flyover country. And um, uh, it, it, it's just amazing to, you see people's faces when you say, well, we drove from Los Angeles to Cabo. You drove? How far is that? Well, it was 3,000 miles round trip, you know, but, but I think the most fun, was, you know, the driving was kind of grueling, but I do think the most fun was, was as they said, the camaraderie, because it's kind of this foxhole mentality. Everybody's in it to, you know, you can't have a weak link. Uh, and number two, I think that the best part of the experience was there were people from 25 countries there. And as you know, Michael, you know, every night was a party. And it was a giant international party. I mean, that, that, you know, the Korean contingent had that giant tent every night and we were eating, you know, uh, silkworm 
uh, larva and and uh, swordfish or whatever they caught. They, the were, learning, they were learning about yeah. fine tequila as well. So it was it was a very international, uh, educationally yeah. uh, rich event. That's yeah, the best cool. part. Absolutely. You know that that group there, they stayed up like every night and fed the last people in at camp. Like if you came in at two, three, four in the morning, you still had a hot meal. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? It was, it was incredible, you know, and, and Andrew has it figured out where he gives you, he gives you a roadmap to an, it's just an incredible adventure and he gives you a roadmap and like <clears throat> goals and you can take that and do with it, whatever you want. You, you know, like, you know, some people quote unquote raced it. If that's your thing, you can do it. If you want to hit every taco stand on the way down you can do it. Um, you know, he just, he, he gives you a good framework for, for whatever kind of adventure you want to do. You want to eat 123 tacos in 10 days. Uh, you know, how I about it? Try. I could try. 60 maybe is good. <laughs> so uh, that taco story, and that was something I wanted to touch on uh, going back to the rental car. Yeah, if you don't mind, guys, uh, knowing, like uh, Jamie had mentioned, I was trying to do our best uh, to keep everybody back home up to date with uh, social media. This is, this is Marshall, so we're, yeah. getting, we're getting the uh, name associated with the voice for those listening at home. Uh, so I'm trying my best to keep, <clears throat> keep everybody up to date back home and online. And uh, But our little snafu at the rental car company, we didn't want to post anything too outlandish or out of hand or That's and, right. and we and honestly we didn't it wasn't not without exaggeration but when you're in the Baja it's completely you are out there there's no we, question about that so we did a photo dump when uh Jamie when the when the insurance or the the whatever ran out on Jamie's credit card like seven days after the event there was a huge photo dump to Facebook they had a five thousand dollar hold on my credit card, Michael, and after that, Marshall just let them fly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. so, Love in, the it. in the meantime, you know, the first—I mean, well, the whole fourteen days—it looked like we were just drinking tequila and eating tacos, and it's like everybody back home are like, "You guys aren't even racing; you're on vacation." Well, I mean, little did they know. I'm like, we have stuff coming, but uh, we had to like kind of play nice just till we got home and got our monies back uh, to really show what, what uh, the trip was like. You and know, so how did you guys approach the Baja XL rally as a rally? Were you in the touring category or were you in the racing category? Touring. 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 Yeah. Not as much because our paths did cross a couple of times. So um, yeah. we were, we were about as slow as you got in that event, which is, um, which is why I had slow Baja painted on my, my soft doors just to set the, the bar as low as possible. Um, having driven a couple of high speed vintage car races before in slow things, it's good to be the, you know, um, the fast guy in the slow thing. Um, what, wh how did you figure out what your route was going to be each day and what, uh, GPS, electronic navigation, paper maps. How did you guys sort that part out? Well, we thought we had it figured out. You know, I, I bought, how many GPSs do we take guys? I took at least two, uh, okay. bought two to take them along. And I bought the maps, you know, the download map that they offer and all of that thinking, oh, we are going to be wired and, and flying. Right. And just never really figured all that out. Um, we had the paper maps, but, and I'll let Marshall describe how he really did it, but it, it all came down to his phone and the GPS antenna that's internal in, in, in smartphones. Um, and we did some pretty amazing uh, crossroads from one side of Baja to the other. And sometimes we were the leader. Here we are, the guys from, you know, 2,500 miles away and we're leading a, a pack. Marshall, how'd you do that? For folks who aren't really familiar, when you say you did crossroads, that means you're on a dirt farm road, a uh, washboard, dirt, whatever you're going to find from one paved road to another paved road, correct? Is that, is that yeah. what we're talking about? Absolutely. Yeah. See you. Yep. Okay. Just, I just want to set the stage for folks who haven't had that lovely experience. <laughs> and in, 
I'll see and this. In my car, in my my old fifty year old Land Cruiser, that's thirty miles an hour tops, and it feels like you are an absolute maniac flying down the road. So I don't know how how fast you could go in your more modern Forerunner, but no, that's no not problem. a fast way of traveling. Right. In a rental car, like 25 miles an hour on those roads feels fast. Yeah, no. So we're in the same boat. I mean, 30, I feel like I'm, I'm on the edge of death flying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it was, well, I think, I think what really had it figured out. So I, again, from traveling and uh, another, on another side note, to, to make a, to make a short story longer, um, that summer before uh, my family and I drove across the country in our, in our Jeep and, uh, you know, just using Google Maps. But you have to be proactive and you have to download the areas just so you, uh, you know, you can, you can be off, you can be off signal, you know, off the grid. But as long as you download the map from Google, um, you know, you still have connectivity. You still have a, a visual. So I had experience doing that. And uh the one, the first, one of the first, uh, getting to Mike Sky Ranch, Craig wanted to, we wanted to stop at a, uh, uh, a point along the way. We wanted to stop at the racers. Oh, like uh, Caselli's Memorial. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're getting out there and we thought we had all the stuff pinned and, we, and set in the GPS and kind of, we weren't sure of ourselves and, and there was no other tracks going to find and, I punched it into Google onto my, onto my phone and like, it literally took us right to it. There was a couple of farmers out working the field. I don't know what they were doing legitimately, but, um, you know, huge language barrier and we're trying to explain what we're doing. And the farmer comes over and he just takes us into basically the underbrush and woods and, uh, takes us to the memorial. And I think wow. from that point on, we kind of understood that this, you know, Google Maps might be pretty advantageous for us, and uh, probably did ninety to ninety-five percent of of our traveling through our directions through Google Maps. We abandoned the GPS pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I, GPS is just too modern for me. I've got to maybe I'll maybe I'll figure out how to download the Google Maps to my phone before I go. But we're Baja Almanac and an old AAA map and a couple of headlamps is how we're doing it in the old slow Baja. Hey, so um, I'm not sure we've really adequately described the people, the vehicles, the terrain, the scenery, the food. Give me the play by play. How did you how did you uh, experience this event? Who did you find yourself driving with day after day if you found this, you know, the same folks day after day? And what can you say about, you know, Bahia de, de Concepcion or the other uh, stunning spots that this event, you know, puts you into? <laughs> well, I'll just talk about the food for a second if I can. I mean, I, I said 123 tacos and that was an actual number. We were counting tacos. <laughs> All right, guys, that's an actual number. And, and, and I think we missed some. We were being conservative. Uh, we didn't, want to we show didn't count the first ones. And, and we just, you know, Marshall has this knack for just wanting to stop at the smallest place you can find. I mean, it's, it's the way he travels. And so we would do that. And I forget the one, the one, uh, C, you know, the, on the, over along the Sea of Cortez, it was south of San Felipe. It was one of the early days. And we stopped at this, uh, it was after the washboard road. Remember the washboard road? Is that Alcantina's camp? Yeah. yeah, Scorpion Bay. We were on the West Coast. Scorpion Bay, that's it. And, and um, so we stopped there because we wanted fish tacos. And we stop at this shack where this, you know, couple is running it. And we're like, fish tacos. No, no, they don't have fish. No fish today. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the water, you know, yeah. and I'm like, no we fish. Today. They have beef tacos, but but the, the the most memorable thing about that was that that they to make the the, the guac uh, for the taco, they went around the back of the shed and we heard the generator fire up so that they could run the blender to make the guac. Wow! Now you don't have a fresher taco than when somebody fires up the generator to run the blender to make your you know your fixings. I mean, it's un unbelievable. 
Yeah. Um, another thing, well, and again, with Google Maps, I've pinned so many places, restaurants and gas stations. So we knew where we were going. And I'd be like, hey, about two miles up here, there's going to be a taco stand on the right. And they're like, what the hell? And there's the taco stand. But uh, uh, yeah, food, food turned out to be, you know, a huge delight and a, a huge uh, highlight of the trip. Uh, you know, getting back to the people, you know, when you get into town. So, I mean, you guys are departing from Tecate this year, if I'm not mistaken. It's yep. you're not, you're not doing the, the start from L.A., no, no. Um, but the, the night when we got into town, <clears throat> pardon me, you know, we caught up and met some people just at the, at the procession, you know, you, you get your room and you're getting prepared and, you know, you're in this big parking lot. And um, that's when we started meeting the other teams, uh, the other members and the other, the other people. And, uh, you know, I think that gave us a good idea of, how this is going to go just because the people were so genuine, uh, same interests. You're, you're all there for the same reason. If you're not looking forward to, you know, an adventure <laughs> through the Baja, you're not in that parking lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And looking uh, back on that, actually, Marshall, uh, ahead, the, the, the people we hung out with for 10 days in Baja are, are uh, actually the people we met the night before and the setup day in the parking lot. Um, I mean, it was, it was uh, fire, you know, firefighter Jim and Wilson and Heather and Brooklyn and Wales. And, you know, those are the people that we actually, just by proximity, it's, Hey, you're, we're, we're getting our vehicles ready next to each other. And then we spend the next 10 days crossing paths and teaming up. It's just super, funny how that happens. That's a super solid group because again, 140 vehicles and youth sit throw out firefighter Jim and Heather and Wilson. And, you know, it just made me realize like, oh, we love all three of those teams. And we, you know, again, bringing up, we were definitely bringing up the rear in Slow Baja, but we ran into Heather and, and Wilson the first night at, um, they ended up at the El Coyote Ranch after Mike's was sold out. And they, they had to go down the gnarly, gnarly road from, from Mike's to El Coyote. And yep. somehow- Wilson sent me the picture yesterday of them getting the Jeep fixed the next day. <laughs> yeah, and somehow they made it. I don't know what they did. They backtracked, they came back. And anyways, the, the quip that he made, because we saw him at breakfast. We didn't see him the, the night before. We saw him at breakfast. And he was like, hey, you're in this event? Oh, hey, you know, we get the introductions down and all that. How'd you get here? Oh, well, we came from Mike's. And like, I just thought my stomach dropped. It's like, oh, you came from Mike's? You guys are poor. But it, and then he relayed the story and it was awful and the whole thing. And then he said, ah, you know, then we, you know, caught some Wi-Fi and watched a movie on Netflix and got some sleep and we're having a great day. Uh, when are you guys leaving? And, you know, like <laughs> follow us out. And we were just moving kind of at a slower pace, but I'm like, these guys are going to be fun. Like yeah, Wilson and Heather, totally unexpected, super fun. Oh, they're some of my great, I talk to Wilson pretty much every day. That's, I mean, it's so amazing. Super fun. You yeah. Know? He invited me out to uh, do the Gambler 500 in Oregon last June, uh, or well, two Junes ago, I guess now. And uh, it was amazing. It was, yeah. it was. So that gets me to the people and lasting friendships. You met some folks. Who, who do you, did you have some takeaways from this where you say like, these are people that we're going to keep in touch with and keep doing fun stuff with, um, you know, down the road? Absolutely. hundred percent. Yep. Yep. We, I think we're all in a, still in a group text with Wilson, you know, every now and then you just hear from him out of nowhere or you, Ooh. Or yep. you comment with them on Facebook and it's it's like no time passes in between. You know, you just pick up on where you left off on every comment. Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm in a book exchange with uh, Phil Ticelli uh, with the guys, the guys that were in the old uh, Blazer. Uh, so oh. we, we ended up sort of on the same pace with them. And um, it's funny that you threw out Phil's name because I'm I feel quite close to Phil now. And we ended up, um, catching them on a morning in Pescadero, just south of Todos Santos, and said, hey, do you guys know a taco stand around here? And it's like 11 o'clock in the morning, so it was kind of early for tacos, but it was, we hadn't had breakfast, so it was one of those things. And they said, oh, yeah, right here. We ate here yesterday. Hey, you guys want to have tacos? And we were, 
I don't know if it's, you know, if we were stereotyping or what, but Ted and I were calling their truck the Almond Brothers. <laughs> you know, straggly hipster dudes, you know, just cool. They're cool guys. But I kept saying to Ted, the, the amount of concentrated uh, talent in that truck, Ted, I'm going to tell you, those guys are not average dudes. They are interesting, interesting dudes. I can see it, you know, as a photographer, I could just see it. So we ended up in this taco stand kind of before the stand opened, but they opened for us. And then it was just, you know, like a, an eight or 10 year old girl's the waitress and the mom and dad are cooking and we brought in a bottle of Fortaleza. And so the six of us, the four in their truck and the two in our truck, I think we solved every problem in the world that day. And we drank the entire bottle and we had great tacos and, you know, whatever it cost us, you know, 12 bucks or something for lunch. And I, I thought like, we need to be on the same pace with these guys for the rest of the rally. Cause these guys are our guys. We, uh, I we filmed Marshall had this idea where he filmed a, a short video while we were on our trip, like from start to finish, just little clips. And uh, they did a scene with us where uh, they were driving the, what was it? Brick blazer. Five blazer and 80 blazer through a uh, water puddle. And we were all filming it and having a great time. Like, yeah, they were awesome. They were. I, I got just, you know, one of the things we did, uh, when you say about the people, one of the things about the people is that everyone's interesting because this is what interesting people do. <laughs> these are not, these are not you know, uh, sheltered people that are going to go and jump in a, in a 40 year old vehicle or 50 or 60 in your case, you know, and drive 3000 miles, uh, devil may care, you know, that those are interesting people that do those things and they find their way and they make their way and they, they improvise and whatever it takes. So, from the start, you know you're going to be with interesting people, and so, and the second thing that, that we had a lot of fun with is you know you can't remember everybody's first name. I mean, it's just impossible. You know you're meeting dozens of people in a in a parking lot at one time, and so so we got onto this little game where we would we would name somebody by like a like their appearance or a visual. Exactly what Tim and I did. We had the nickname game going the whole time. Yeah, and you know when we talk about Brooklyn and Wales, I mean that was the if you remember the purple Tacoma. The, the, or the blue Tacoma that yeah. they brought from, from Brooklyn. I mean, yeah. we just called, his name was Phil, right? Wasn't Phillip it Phil? And, and Leaf, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it was Philip, it was Leaf. Brooklyn and Wales. And I called her Wales because she only <laughs> came on the trip because her boyfriend promised her she'd see Wales. Yeah. So, <laughs> the guys you're talking about, Phil DeSalle oh, and so Let me Let me just jump in for a second because I always said to, to, uh, to Phil, I always just said uh, to, um, yes, sorry with the with the Tacoma from the brand new Tacoma from Brooklyn yeah. well, I always just yelled to them hey Brooklyn yeah right <laughs> and then the guys you're talking about in the blazer that was um that was Almond Wales and no, I'm sorry Waldo yeah. um, ZZ Top ZZ Top, ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> so Waldo was uh J JG because he was always wearing that knit cap I'm assuming right yeah, you're Bingo. <laughs> so we did this the whole trip. I mean, it was it was so much fun because you could rattle off 20 people and all three of us knew exactly who you were talking about, but you yeah, didn't have a single first name. You got to hold a conversation and you need to know, you know, so you just use the visual. What's funny is once you start realizing every other team is using the nickname method, now you can communicate with everybody. And it, it just seemed like, yeah, it was it was working. Yeah, we have uh, flannel was with uh, Brooklyn and Wales too. Yep, flannel, flannel, flannel. Yep, flannel. Was that Matt Sertian? Who was that? It was. Yep, yep. Matt wore a flannel shirt a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of the other ways. <laughs> I'll, 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 the Jokers in Slow Baja were they just Slow Baja? <laughs> it was. I mean, I think so. That was pretty easy. Yeah. You All know, right. one of the other you had asked a question earlier about who we hung out with, and one of the other things that 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 situated us with a certain group is that Craig's a motorcycle mechanic. And so Brooklyn and Wales and so on, they were with those two guys on dirt bikes, Jim and, and England, you yeah, know, the British yeah, guy. Brits. And, uh, and, and they had a couple of breakdowns and Craig brought a whole bunch of tools, shipped them out there and had the knowledge and so on. So we found ourselves one day, we spent a pretty big part of the day, a large part of the day, helping them to fix their bike. One had a broken uh, engine case and a couple other things and 
think England couldn't get his bike started. And so, you know, Craig became their de facto mechanic. And, and as a result, you, you end up, you know, tailing each other all day long. And so that's how we got really close with them. And so that's something that's very hard to describe to people who aren't, you know, it's not, I don't want to say you're in the trenches or this is, you know, that sort of experience, but you've had a, you know, a, an experience and, and um, these are people that you would do anything for. And Craig, I just, I'm thrilled that, you know, you, you ended up, and these are folks that, you know, I can recall quite clearly from a couple of years ago, um, England uh, would drink tequila. The other rider would not drink tequila. That's how I classify them. Uh, ad guy. I don't, I don't remember his name, Jim, somebody ad guy is who I refer to him in my nickname head. Um, ad guy didn't drink tequila. The Brit did drink tequila. And so you were fixing the brakes, huh, Craig? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it just all worked. It, it was, it was crazy. And, you know, so the day we were fixing their bikes, uh, we were in a gas station parking lot the first time, just after we came back for, came down from Mike Sky Ranch. And we were in a parking lot with the... Uh, That's like the, day two. Yeah, day yeah. two with the Allman Brothers. And <laughs> we, watched, we watched the local federales roll in and like quick run into a house. And oh, like, right. like shotguns out, like run into a house. And we're just sitting in the, like, the parking lot of a gas station eating gas station tacos and ice cream. And, uh, and they come out with the, the person they were looking for and drive away. And it was just like, oh, my word, did that just happen? You know, did that, did that just go down? Um, yes, it did. Stories like that, like, the, like we were in the campsite one night. And, you know, to go back to what Jamie said about interesting people, um, we kept hearing this noise and the lights in the campground would dim. So we go to investigate. And here they're putting motor mounts in a Volvo. Yes. You remember that? Oh, yeah, yeah constantly. Oh, yeah. Ask me, they're like, so what was it like? I'm like, all right, I'm going to tell you this. We were in the campsite. Cutting them out of a tire or something, right? Yeah, a Vespa tire. Motor mounts in a Volvo. Tire, of course, a Vespa tire. Out of a Vespa tire. Did anybody mention that there are two dudes on Vespas on this event? <laughs> <laughs> were there? I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and when you stopped and looked at what was going on, you're in Mexico, you're doing this. And there's four other countries helping. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The guy from Finland the who knew Volvo's like the back of his hand Volvo. and he's fixing their buy the car. Yeah. And, and it's like, and then they look at you stupid and you're like, really, I can't make this shit up. No, they're making a <laughs> motor mount at a party after drinking a lot of tequila and eating tacos for a Volvo wagon. Hey, there's a Volvo wagon on an off road, you know, event in Baja. So a Volvo wagon in Martinelli racing schematics <laughs> and you're using an, an, a used Vespa tire to make a motor mount. Let's start there. True story. True to story. us, that doesn't sound strange anymore, does it? <laughs> no, I come to expect it now on places I go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was, there was a lot of firsts, you know, uh, when uh, that, that same, that same uh, we were at the, it was the RV resort that night and uh we got a kick out of you know they they turned out the lights so uh you know one of the one of the staff was going around with a a, a ladder a step ladder and just going around and unscrewing all the lights in the rv park and that's how the lights went out that night <laughs> you know that's one way of doing it Hey, so uh, we glossed over the fact, I forget which one of um, your gang here is in a book exchange with Phil Toselli. So let's back up to that. For those who don't know Phil Toselli, Phil Toselli sketched a cactus with a spare tire in it that became my logo when I saw it in his sketchbook. And I said, hey, can you send me that? I would love to use that as my slow Baja logo. And uh, he's kind of a, he's kind of a dude. He's, um, he works for uh, Tyler, the creator, this, you know, crazy LA, you know, I hate to say the word rapper, but he's a quite a, an entertaining musician and Phil is his super designer who designs all of his stuff. So that's the kind of guy I hate to say it, Phil, maybe I'll have to edit all that out. That's the kind of guy who's just hanging around with a bunch of other dudes in an old 
80s K5 Blazer. Yeah, yeah. correct. So it, uh, Marshall again. Yeah. What kind of uh, books are you exchanging with him, Marshall? Yeah, so he posted, and like, like, like we mentioned, you know, we still stay in uh, contact and social media, you know, that, that helps. And uh, came across the one day, this is just before Christmas, a couple months, you know, a month ago. And uh, Phil's like, hey, anybody wants to do this book exchange, hit me up. So I did. And uh, my, one of my buddies from Hungary is like, where am I sending this book? I'm like, you got to send it to Phil. And uh, so that's just the type of fun stuff. Like the fun, like seems to still continue from the Baja, uh, you know, that, that type of uh, uh, networking and, and it's, it's, <clears throat> that way it's, uh, it's on, it's online, but we're still connecting. Yeah. I've actually rolled through um, I'm in San Francisco and I've rolled through Los Angeles a few times and seen two of the other guys in his truck uh, a number of times and then took Phil out to lunch once. And then of course, you know, um, he was kind enough to get my college age daughter an introductory job at the company that he works for, which was astonishing as well. So these are the sort of things that come out of driving around Baja with folks. So, Hey, um, did you guys have any problems? You were renting a beautiful newish forerunner, any problems, any breakdowns, any, anything that went wrong? No, so. go ahead, Jamie. No, I, no, I don't. I don't think so. I, I, yeah. Honestly, the mate, the biggest problem I can recall we had was the, the roof rack uh, shook a little loose going up to Mike's Sky Ranch the first night. That's it. Say again. The, the roof rack uh, that was pretty rough, you know, side to side, kind of bouncing around going up to Mike's Sky Ranch. We had a bunch of stuff up on the roof rack, and it just it just shook loose a little bit. Did we have anything beyond that? No nope. windshield. Oh yeah, we took a rock in the windshield off a of, off a dirt bike, uh, spinning dirt bike tire. Yeah, but it was funny. It was the the windshield was already chipped when we got the truck, and we were, like made sure to point it out after the whole rental fiasco, and um, the the rock came up and like hit the same spot, but it like spidered the bottom of the windshield. So when we returned it, we were like, "Remember that was already broke." And they're like, "Oh yeah, that's right." <laughs> Yeah, for all the hubbub at the beginning of the rental where they were very nervous about it. And as a result, like Craig said, we pointed out every little chip and ding on the thing to make sure we weren't going to get charged for it. Uh, we returned it. We took it to the car wash and gave it a really, really good bath. But when we returned it, they just kind of waved us on. Hey, thanks. Nice. Nice. <laughs> hey, what, what, what would be your advice to others about, again, uh, you guys came in from Pennsylvania. You picked up a rental car. Uh, not everybody's going to do the same um, level of effort where you cherried that thing out with a great set of graphics and really, um, you know, had a, had a, I don't know, a, you made a huge effort to do something really fun and cool. So what would your advice be to others about the Baja XL? If I, if I can jump in, it's Marshall again. Marshall. Hello, graphics guy. From doing, uh, if I can, just advice. Uh, from doing the, the first rally, one of the things I learned, and that was one thing I emphasized while we were still, you know, hashing things out here in the garage in Schaeferstown, was uh, at every moment, we need to work together. Uh, from the, the first rally, everybody was talking about, um, you know, good friends would, you know, a race, any type of competition or race like this, um, you know, you can work on each other or it can, everybody handles uh, issues or problems differently, but we have to work together to work through them. And I don't think it matters if you're doing the adventure class or the touring or, or a full out race, uh, keeping your wits about yourselves and, and working with each other, not, not working against each other. Um, that made a, that made a, a huge difference just cons I, for me. And I, I know the other guys did as well, just considering each other's, uh, you know, take on the whole thing and making sure we work together to make the most fun and, and, and make it enjoyable. Well, I think that's pretty profound. Uh, the, the high speed, high stress, um, La Carrera Panamericana, 2,000 miles in six days, flat out all day. 
uh, vintage car racing that I did before I ended up bouncing down the road in Baja in, in my old Land Cruiser, the advice that I heard from the organizers was what happens in the car stays in the car. Um, but I think that it takes a special friendship, a special level of camaraderie and a special level of letting, and I'm just going to use a vulgarity here, letting shit go um, to keep it all fun and enjoyable in the vehicle. And if it's not fun and enjoyable, I don't know why you're doing it. So Ted and I in our old Land Cruiser, we're laughing all the time. We're laughing at ourselves. We're laughing at others. We're laughing at the Allman Brothers. We're laughing at, you know, guys who rented a uh, forerunner and decked it out in graphics. We're laughing at Heather and Wilson who are like really together and have their, they had their shit together. We were laughing because they were ready to go and we weren't even packed yet trying to get out of uh, Rancho El Coyote. And we said, I said, we're going to see them a lot and they are going to be really on it. So we're just, you know, we laugh, but it's, it's, it's hard doing these events. I'd have, I guess I'd have three things. This is Jamie. I'd have three things to, to, to suggest, you know, don't, you got to be self-sufficient. Don't expect the path to be paved for you. I kind of did. Um, I, you know, my experience had been doing, doing uh, long distance endurance rallies on a motorcycle where you've got to pick off bonuses, you know, all over seven or eight States in a couple of days. And you have to really, really be organized. And, and when it comes to scoring, you know, if you don't have every T and every uh, T cross I dotted, you're going to lose. And it wasn't anything like that. It was pretty much like, uh, hey, here's your here's your sticker. Um, glad to see you made it. Uh, we'll see it the first day. And if we don't see the first day, we'll see the second day. You know, <laughs> and, then, and was, I, didn't, I didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be, you know, almost like a, an every night they're taking a head count and making sure you're, you know, roll call, you're present. Is everybody safe? Is everybody okay? Nope. Uh, you, you take care of yourself. That's my one observation. Uh, my second is is don't sweat the small stuff. Um, we were very prepared. I felt in terms of equipment, we even went to Harbor Freight in 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 Los Angeles there, and you know bought a whole bunch of stuff and weighed the vehicle down, and and uh, and we were careful. And if we didn't need it, we didn't open the package, and we returned a whole lot of stuff when we got back to California that we had never used. Uh, because we just now we had a modern vehicle, but we just you know you think everything's going to break and it's not that bad. And and thirdly, you talked about the, you know, the team effort. I mean, you are going to spend every waking hour with these people. Uh, the only time you're going to be away from them is when you're sleeping or if you just go get lost, which one of the guys from, I think, Hungary got, went missing a day or two. Yeah, Maybe did. that was why, but, but, you know, it, in the beginning, I'll admit it was a little tense because I was worried about the vehicle. I'm worried like, oh, we're going to ruin this thing. They're going to charge us thousands and thousands of dollars. And Whose credit card? Was it on your credit card, Jamie? My, it was my card. <laughs> and, and you know, and so I was nervous in the beginning and every little bump and, and nudge, you know, is like, oh, no, there goes the money. But uh, I loosened up and and when it, and in the end, it, it uh, again, don't sweat the small. It doesn't matter. We returned that vehicle. They didn't seem to care. We didn't seem to care. And we have a lifetime of memories. Wow. That's, that's, uh, I, we should leave it right there, but I'm going to um, say, Hey, what's the best way you guys have put up uh, Marshall. I'm going to say that's probably you have put up a lot of great photographs and information on Facebook and other places. So let's jump into that. Where can people find the things that you've posted Marshall or where your team's posted? So we did. Uh, so I, as you know, and you've mentioned do, uh, with, with graphics, uh, my business is, is marketing. So social media, you know, we created a, a Facebook page called, uh, you can find us at Desert Dutchman on Facebook and, uh, and, and Instagram. And it's, it's probably, it's definitely dated. I know I don't get to keep up to it now that it's been two years later, but um, I think last year for the anniversary I did a, uh, a, com a compilation of a bunch of videos and, and shots from the day. Uh, it's just fun. You, could, you get a really good sense of, of uh, again, the terrain, the, the atmosphere, what's going on the, the before, the after parties, the, during the day. You, so you can see all those videos in our, on our page, uh, The Desert Dutchman. And 
that was, and unbeknownst to us, and I think it was probably last minute, we won the, the photography award, you know, just, just highlighting. And I think uh, Andrew probably appreciated that just because, um, you know, he's got a full-time job as well, managing this traveling circus. And uh, you have little time to do that, that photography and documenting the days and, and destinations and, and uh, you know, the checkpoints and stuff like that. So I wanted to make sure, and he didn't ask me, it wasn't that type of concern. It was more of, of documenting our trip for, for our own uh, benefit. So all that stuff is there on our page. Um, and that's Desert Dutchman on Facebook and Desert Dutchman on Instagram. And these guys have really done, I, I had to take a um, quick deep dive on the, on the Facebook page, looking at all their slideshows again before we had this Zoom call. And it really is a great look at, um, you've done a multi-part slideshow and it's really a great look at what this event is like for folks who are trying to figure it out and saying, hey, maybe I should do it, I don't know. It seems like a lot of work or kind of a, a maybe an adventure that's beyond me, but let's just boil it down one more time. Your vehicle didn't work out, you found a rental vehicle, you flew into San Diego, you rented a vehicle, you put a huge deposit down on the vehicle, you kitted it out with graphics and Harbor Freight stuff, you drove it, I don't know, 3,000 plus miles with, and made a bunch of friends, dirt, paved, taco stands, remote beaches, remote camps. Did you guys camp every night? We didn't talk about that. Did you get some hotels or did you camp every night? We, we <laughs> scheduled it out so that we could shower every other day was the plan. Was it every other yeah yeah so yeah we had a we had a hotel at well we got a room at mike sky ranch and then i know we had a room at Toto santos four days later five days later it was yeah. that five, then there might have been one in between i think There's we were one in between two nights but i think Toto santos was probably the our biggest surprise and our biggest um we'd like the baller suite at Toto santos Oh, it's amazing. That's a nice it time. I, I just said to a fellow yesterday that I was talking to um, who has a uh, kayak and uh, paddleboard business in Loreto. I said, you know, if I, if I were to move to Baja, I would either live in Loreto or Toto Santos, but probably Toto Santos because there's actually surf. Yeah, and Toto Santos has a place. That was, that was great. That was the baller suite. We had laundry. Yeah, and the dryer. Uh, washer and dryer we were we were offering it out to every all the teams you know we since we got our laundry done like come on over throw it in we've got it we it seemed like we had the only one in the place and uh, that's where it goes on this these events isn't it we've got we've got this come and use it hey um yeah. let's wrap it up gentlemen i appreciate you making some time for slow baja last thoughts everybody go through and give me just you know one or two sentences about you know your last thoughts on the baja xl your experience your you know, what you'd say to others. Go ahead. I think uh, it's Marshall again. I think uh, if, if you're considering it, uh, just know that you can do it. Uh, there's no questions asked. Uh, the people that we ran into, uh, either we helped them or they helped us. There was no, no questions asked. And, you know, it was just a, a camaraderie unlike uh, anything else. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're hesitant, just know that you can do it. That's valuable. I had a, a fellow call me today that uh, is one of my old La Carrera racing buddies who got into this thing the day after the event closed. I, I called Andrew and said, hey, let this guy in. He's a good guy. He's going to have fun. And he was, he called me today and there was just a little bit of freak out in his voice. Have you seen the weather reports? Do you know that it's just pouring rain in Baja right now? I've got a buddy who's got a 20 year old land, uh, 20 year old Jeep. We're going to do this and this. And I said, you know what? You can drive the first three days on pavement. and Nobody will care. Yeah. You know? Day yeah. four, when it's finally dry, you're going to get onto the dirt. But I said, just, you know, don't worry. There are no rules. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. You don't have to, you don't have to get out and get your vehicle stuck in the mud. That's, that's the, the thing I noticed. I, I, I said it before, and, and I think Andrew 
he has it figured out. He gives you the roadmap to an awesome adventure. And, and then it's up to you to make of it what you want. Like you do you, you know, you play the game your way. Um, and, and that's what it is now. Yeah. We had a newer vehicle and, and put graphics on it and stuff, but we also had, you know, our, our return bill to the parts store, I think was like three or 400 bucks you know, and then Harbor Freight for toe straps and this and that went, to, you know, whatever else we had that we didn't use. So like we were prepared, but it's not like you're going into the, look, we did Baja with Google Maps on our phone and didn't have to use any spare gas in our gas cans. So it's not quite the Alcan, huh? It, it's not, it, it, you know, it used to be, and it still is remote in my opinion, as, as we'll get you know, in, in, in driving distance. Um, but you know, you have to be prepared, but you're not gonna, it, it's not uh, completely desolate, you know, don't be afraid of it. It's a wonderful place. The, the people are amazing. The food's amazing. The scenery's amazing. Um, the Baja XL was incredible and the people we met were amazing. So that's, that's a pretty uh, rousing review. The people in Baja are amazing. That I always say that, and I always like the people on my podcast to give me their opinions, and so you're there on that. But also the people on the Baja XL. Again, I mean, we've yeah. shared our love for Phil. We've shared our love for the Allman Brothers and, and Heather and Wilson and, and others, multiple others, the Koreans, you know, just <clears throat> crazy, fun, wonderful folks. Um, and it really is an interesting place to start that all these people who have come to this event have come to drive 3,000 miles bouncing through Baja and they're not they're not you know Baja 1000 racers they're they've got rooftop tents they've got Vespas they've got Unimogs they've got 50 year old Land Cruisers they've got an old you know uh, motorcycle or whatever it's a very diverse group yeah I didn't see one person upset at the after party when we got back to LA Oh my God. I was only upset because I had to drop Ted off and then ended up, my wife was working in LA that week. And so I met her at the hotel and we didn't, I didn't go to the party. Oh, <laughs> Jay, Jamie was the closest cause he had a bad taco just before we left Mexico. Oh. And I got, yeah, yeah. I, you know, Michael, I would say I'll, I'd never actually only one bad taco. You ac actually won the lottery. Jamie, yeah. Because there are never I, 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 tacos in the Baja. <laughs> I don't even think it was a taco. I think I was the only guy that had co uh, coffee in San Felipe. So I kind of think it was the water and the coffee. So you guys didn't go to Guadalupe Canyon. You went to San Felipe for the last night. Was that, was that what happened? Oh That's boy. Story. That's a, episode two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't make it to Guadalupe Canyon. Yeah, we're already over an hour. No, we didn't go either. And we didn't, yeah. the Almond brothers, we, we, uh, we pulled them in with us and said, you guys shouldn't go to Guadalupe Canyon either because it's pouring rain up there. Yeah. Yeah. That night yeah, we were in uh, where's 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 the big where's the big uh, concert in uh, in California? Uh, uh, you're, you're talking about the uh, the one out in the desert there. Um, yeah, we. Uh, yeah, that one. What's the one out by Indio? What's the name of it? Da 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 with a C. Sorry, God, Coachella. We, Coachella. We you know I'm old when I can't remember Coachella. Yes, that's the one that's on my charge card bill that my daughter goes to. Right, we get we ended up having to uh, cross the border, and we just we got a room in Coachella that night. It was like if we can't get to the canyon, we just gotta we got to keep moving. That was that's another aspect of the trip. Just keep moving. You just know. figuring it out. Keep moving. Now you you know you're gonna like Marshall said you're gonna make it. Uh, one of the reasons you're gonna make it is nobody's gonna let you behind. Uh, and that's you know we talked about that already. I mean everybody everybody is gonna help you, and. Um, and, and like you said, you know, you can take paved roads, you can take dirt roads, nobody's going to judge because you're all going to end up the same place the next night. And you're all going to end up under the tent, you know, <laughs> drinking and eating with, with everybody else. And it's just, it's just so much fun. It, it, the one thing I've noticed on the on the Facebook page that a lot of uh, first timers are worried about is gas. And we, again, we had a good sized tank, but I don't see why you'd worry about gas. There was plenty of gas. We had cans. The only reason we had cans, as it turned out, we kept a little bit of gas for any of the dirt bikers that might run out. But um, Yeah, well, let me, let me add a different, slightly different perspective. So I've got a, um, 
a 50 year old truck that gets 10 miles to the gallon and it's got a 15, 15 gallon tank. So I brought 15, you know, three, five gallon gas tanks um, with me on the last Baja XL. And I actually needed to use one plus, so one and, and change. Um, and that was because we had a 16 hour drive one day with two hours of idling while the Vespa guys were fixing their, one of the Vespas in the road in front of us. And we just idled with our high beams on so we could, they could see what they were doing. And we provided them a little bit of cover in case somebody came flying up the road. But, you know, it was two hours of idling that, you know, cost me a half tank of gas probably. Mm -hmm. But this trip, I'm going with one five gallon can. And so let's recap that. My truck has a small gas, gas tank, 15 gallons. My truck gets horrible gas mileage, 10 miles to the gallon. I'm driving with one spare five gallon tank. So, you know, it's just not that difficult. You see gas, you see a gas station, stop and get gas. And don't pass them. Get yeah, don't to the bathroom, get a snack. You know, it's just, that's, it's right. Baja. It hasn't changed since my first trip down there in 1984. You see a gas station that's open, stop and get gas. The best part is there's chances are there's a solid chance of tacos. So <laughs> <laughs> we, the one time when uh, Craig was working on the, on the dirt bikes for the guys, um, he's a Brit. Yeah. He's greasy up to his shoulders and uh, we're running around trying to get epoxy or a sealant uh, for the crankcase. And, uh, Craig's all dirty and Jamie and I are over in the corner eating uh, tamales uh, while he's working on this stuff. And then we go to go and Craig's like, I didn't know you guys had tamales. Yeah. I was like, well, how about we stop and get something to eat? They're like, dude, we just ate like 15 tamales. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? Hey, Dan, can you guys just give me 30 seconds more on the food? You're from Pennsylvania. You haven't had Baja street tacos, you know, every day, all day, like I can get here in San Francisco or Ted, my, my Mexico adventure buddy can get in San Diego. what did you think of the food? So here, again, like I like to plan. So I had like, I had all these restaurants and things pinned on. Uh, where, where's the place that had, uh, the, the the iron ore mines or not the iron ore but uh, uh yeah so that's um santa rosalia yes uh, pretty, the, pretty the, funky little town isn't it yeah. yeah super cool and i i had places pinned there when we got there so we kind of had a good idea where to get some food um and to, to just to to jump back real quick um so being in the Baja was, that was the first time I was in the Baja, but I've been to Mexico numerous times. So, you know, every, every location is different, you know, but, you know, I was highly anticipating and, and looking forward to the food just because kind of had an idea what to expect, but you, you don't expect everything, but yeah, it, it's, if it looks, how did we say it? Um, the worse like, it looks, the better it is. Right. I like taco stands with wheels. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was my favorite. We were not disappointed. Let's put it that way. You, you're not going to be disappointed in the food. And this, there, it's not Taco Bell. It's not your Mexican restaurant in your town. It's, this is authentic. And the people, well, the one thing I always say going into Mexico is if the locals are there, that's where you want to eat. Cause, um, that's why there's a line. That's why the locals are there, you know, just get on board with whatever they're doing. And that's, that's my take on, on the food. Well, I think we're going to leave it right there. Gentlemen, I've been uh, thrilled to have all three of you on, on slow Baja talking about the Baja XL. I think that the, your approach to that event was top notch and, uh, you know, you got the tequila Fortaleza award from me on uh, the way you you took on extra effort gold stars next to all of your names for the efforts you made to to um, wrap the vehicle and uh, to be good guys and to have great graphics and great hats and and all that and just darn nice folk so um, I hope our paths cross down the road 
And I'm sorry you're not on this trip because you know I have twice the amount of tequila and there are only half the amount of participants. So I'm sorry you're not with us. But uh, I look forward to our, our paths crossing somewhere uh, down the road. So take me out, guys. For sure. Thank you, Michael. And, and thank you for, for reaching out and, and, uh, and, and welcoming us and our group, the, the three of us, into... Uh, you broke up a little bit there. You want to say that again? What, whatever your accolades were, we lost them to the ether. So one more time. Stroke, well, stroke my ego one more time, please, Craig. Or Marshall, whoever I was talking I said, to. Marshall. No, I said, uh, thank you for uh, welcoming us into the, your folding table that you would set up every evening and and, and pouring us some and, and just that, that friendship, that kindship is, is, was huge for us. Hey, when we saw that, yeah, I, I'd say thank saw that table in the backyard of some woman's shop in El Triunfo, I'm like, how much for that? I've already bought your, your cow skull, ma'am. I've already bought some hand embroidered uh, napkins, ma'am. How much for that, that metal table in your backyard? And she was just like, are you kidding me? That? And I'm like, yes, that. So we, uh, we put it to use. And uh, I'm sorry I'm not bringing one with us, but maybe we'll find another one on this trip. But that was, that was quite a fine to uh, score that guy. Perfect for the yeah, 40. If, when, we saw the when we saw the table was set up, we knew it was time for shots. And shots. Uh, you know, we, knew, we knew it was time to uh, tell the stories of the day. That was the, that was the communal table. Yeah, yeah, it was. That was fun. It, it was a lot of fun. You know, thank thank you for having us. Thanks. I'm 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 proud. I'm proud that we, you know, three dudes from Pennsylvania in a rental car, got your attention. Um, and then you know, it felt good having the respect to people that have been down there and and uh, just getting to meet everybody. And yeah, it was a blast. Yeah. Well, three good luck. three dudes from Pennsylvania with uh, a serious. Um, approach, graphics, hats, what have you. Um, if you didn't notice you guys, you weren't paying attention is my point. Good luck next week, Michael. That's, that's the, what's that, Jamie? I, I was wishing him good luck. Uh, slow Baja next week. I think he's, he said he's leaving Tuesday. Yeah, we're so. leaving. Uh, so let's, let's back this up for the folks who are listening on the internet. Uh, we are recording on the 21st. This uh, this podcast will probably go live just before I take off on the Baja XL 2021, which will be on the 29th. So this will probably go live on maybe a week from now on the 28th. And um, I'm sorry, I'm sincerely sorry you guys aren't going to meet us in Takati, but it's going to be fun. I've already checked in with Heather and Wilson. We've got some, some fun folks from last time going this time. And Sadly, again, the uh, Almond Brothers won't be there, but uh, you know, maybe I'll stop in and say hello to them on my way from San Francisco to uh, San Diego on the way down. I was close. I thought I was going to hook up with uh, Team Voodoo uh, and meet you guys down there, but uh, it just didn't work out. Yeah, well, please give Wilson a hard time. Yeah, I'll do my best. Down. I'll give Will. I'll. Give, do my best to give Wilson a hard time and to give Heather double shots. So we'll leave it on that note, gentlemen. Thanks for making some time for Slow Baja and telling some stories about Team Desert Dutchman. One more time, you can find them on Facebook or Instagram at Team Desert Dutchman. Thanks, guys. You got it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Jamie, Craig, Marshall, it's my pleasure to have you on the Slow Baja. So we'll uh, hopefully our paths will cross somewhere down the road. Cheers, gents. Cheers. 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 Good luck next week. Slow Baja's wardrobe is provided by Taylor Stitch. Responsibly built for the long haul, Taylor Stitch makes clothes that wear in, not out. Wherever your adventure takes you, Taylor Stitch has you covered. Check them out at taylorstitch.com. Hey, you guys know what to do. Please help us by subscribing, sharing, rating, all that stuff. And if you missed anything, you can find the links in the show notes at slowbaja.com. I'll be back before you know it. And if you want to receive notices on new episodes, please follow Slow Baja on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for you old folks.